From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big night as more corporate earnings are released and what we know across the board misses left and right. And also some major beats. And we'll be looking at why some companies continue to beat to find the odds of a recession and inflation. The biggest week that there was heats up tomorrow as the new labor numbers are released early tomorrow morning. What are we looking at? All the latest projections for those new jobless claims Thursday morning. Plus, on Friday, will the farm payroll, non-farm payroll job creation numbers. What did we learn about those yesterday? The jolts will have the latest details on that. Plus, the raise of your benefits happening a lot, a lot, a lot of money, because inflation has not yet gone down. And has inflation beat across the board? Well, the latest calculation tonight and what you need to know after a month in which numbers continue to beat. We are just days away from those inflationary numbers of July. They're coming in less than six days. Plus, the housing market continues to soften. But what does this mean for you and your money? The great news is that your benefits are going up a lot. The other great news is, <laughs> you know what I'm about to say, there's a force to much check in every U.S. state. We're going to go over those incredible checks in tonight's recording. Approximately $100,000. You qualify. Single individual, $75,000 less. Go get it. Married couple, $150,000 less. Go get it. Go under this video and become a member and stay the big second half as we go over these monstrous checks and a monstrous night of recording. We have a lot of major breaking news coming in tonight. For August 3rd, 2022, OPEC Plus agrees to increase production of gasoline. What does it mean for the price of gasoline at the pump? I'll have the latest details across the board. One of the biggest tech platforms lays off more employees. There's now 32,000 tech employees that have lost their job of the year 2022. I'll have the latest details tonight across the board. Plus, we have new guidance on where this economy is, where it's going. We have Fed speak from two governors that spoke in the Federal Reserve in less than 24 hours and we have the latest details on the bond market the labor market and your stimulus it's a big night across the board see the very end of this recording we're going to go over all these breaking details left and right plus stay the very end because you're going to have a major analysis in the final minutes of the video you've never seen before what is it it's coming up tonight from the shores of santa monica california tonight we have a lot going on and that due details Starts right here, right now. Your economy, the recession, inflation, benefit raises, and also the housing market. Unemployment and your stimulus, the breaking news starts right here, right now. As Evenings L8 gets underway for July 3rd, 2022, tonight. And the breaking news starts right now. Corporate earnings were missing over the last two weeks, but what did we learn tonight? Now, if there's a series of latest breaking news reports as earnings fall on top and bottom, a revenue net profit, what do we learn tonight after a sea of misses from Snap, Twitter, Alphabet, and also Microsoft? Let's get to the breaking news starting right now. Tonight, we see more companies actually beating yes corporate revenue is very important because it shows you indication of where this economy is and the recession we had moderna surging more than 15 percent at the start of the market today when they beat on top and bottom cvs health beat on top and bottom as well is up five percent shares of starbucks were up dramatically nearly two percent when they beat on top and bottom and so did paypal the online credit card processing company up more than 11 percent in pre-market trading major miss however on another front, and that was for Match Group, as it posted a tumble of 23% of its stock today as it missed on top and bottom. Later, we're going to go over why the indication of this earnings recession is very difficult to look at. When you see some industries doing really well and others not doing really well, and some analysts saying we're in a recession, and others saying it's a bull market. Which one is it? It's coming up later in this recording. Tonight, we have the preview of tomorrow as well. Tomorrow, we have the latest numbers on those jobs claims. They're expected to go to the highest number of the year. 260,000 is where I'm projecting them to be. Where have they been so far? 140,000 in the month of April, then went to 166, then to 200. I projected 230. It was there. Three weeks of 230. Surged to 251 and then to 260, likely to come in 
at 260 thereafter. Tonight, we learn a little bit more about also inflation, as inflation continues to track higher and that inflationary numbers continue to come on in. But the major numbers are coming in less than 30 days from now. Last Friday, we had the latest numbers on inflation, and those latest numbers on inflation tracked higher across the board. In fact, the highest inflationary read of a generation. Why is this important for you? Because your benefits are going up. We're going to go over all those incredible calculations in just a second. But first, let's start with that CPI projection coming on August 10th. On August 10th, the Consumer Price Index that gauges where the U.S. inflation is is likely to go higher. Why? Because this PCE released last Friday was the highest inflationary read we've seen, seen since the 1980s. This is big news for you. Why? Because your benefits are going up a lot. How much? Approximately $5,000 more per year. This is you. Big money, huge money. The biggest money of your generation, of your lifetime. We'll go over the calculation of the money in a second. But first, we're going to go over the latest details on that inflationary news tonight, starting right now. Inflation is gauged by a series of numbers, not a series of analysts. It's the pure data. It's pure data. And that data started to come in in the month of June when we saw the retail sales beat on that Friday, but the Wednesday, July 13th, the CPI beat. Then on Thursday, the producer price index beat as well. What does this mean for you? Big money. Big money. Because if inflation continues to track higher, your benefits are going up a lot. Let's see what happened then and what's happening tonight. On July 13th, we had the Consumer Price Index number released for the month of June. In the May, it was 8.6%. The month of June surged out of control to a whopping 9.1% print, the highest since 1981 for inflation. Great news for your benefits because your benefits are going up the highest of a generation of a lifetime. When Wall Street was looking at an 8.8 .8 print, it came in at 9.1. That was day one, July 13th. July 14th, then the producer price index beat as well. Came in 11.3% when that's nearly the highest number, second highest ever number recorded on this channel. The day after was the retail sales on Friday. As inflation tracks higher, then your benefits go higher as well. Tonight, what do we know about this? And what is the latest we're anticipating? Tonight, we know that inflation is still upon us. Why? Because the producer, the CPI is being released on August 10th, but between the CPI prints was last Friday's number. The PCE, the Personal Consumption Expenditure Index, it was the highest number since the 1980s. Moreover, we have Fed governors who spoke minutes ago today, and those Fed governors continue to say inflation's still a problem. So they admit that inflation's still a problem, and they think it's going to be a problem for a while. Let's look at their comments tonight, and what's at issue? Fed President of St. Louis, James Boulard, said today that there is no recession, but inflation will eventually come down. But it hasn't. We're going to have to see more convincing evidence across the board, headline and other measures of core inflation all coming down convincingly before we're able to feel like we've done our job. So he says it hasn't come down. He's absolutely right. San Francisco President Mary Daly today also said that the central bank still has to do a lot more and has to bring that inflation down and is, quote, far from over to bring inflation down. We'll go over how this impacts your benefits in just a second, and big news for your stimulus as well. Here's the analysis. Kim Forrester, founder of Borat Capital Partners, says, while it's a nice surprise to get readjusted to your thinking, we're not thinking that it's taken off yet. We need a little bit more information to tell us what we're forecasting. As we are tonight, we have not seen a reprise for inflation. It's still tracking higher. There's no indication that inflation has peaked. No data whatsoever that shows inflation has peaked. This is great news for your benefits. First, let's go over why, and then we'll go over the calculation starting right now. Your benefits are tied to something called COLA, and COLA is cost of living adjustment, but it's determined by another number, and that is the CPI-W. Well, here we go. That CPI-W for the three months of July, August, and September. Determine your benefits. And they are determined in turn by inflation. Now, whose benefits are going to go up? How they go up? What's at issue? Let's go over the calculation starting right now. 
Over the last two months, we've been waiting for this big CPI-W print to be released on August 10th. It's the July number for the CPI-W. Yes, it's a subsection of CPI. And if, if inflation stays right where it is right now, same as where it was in the month of June, your benefits are going up the biggest of a generation. It's great news for you. You're never going to see a benefit lift this high again. So we need to see three months of data, but potentially we may not have to, we may not have to wait three months if the data is so robust when we see it on August 10th. Here's what is issue. July's numbers release August 10th. August's numbers release in September. September's numbers release in October will give us a guidance of how high those benefits raises are going to go. They're already going up the biggest of a generation, but they could potentially go through the roof. All right, now let's go over the calculation and what you need to know. First, is everyone's benefits going up? Yes, everyone's benefits are going up across the board. Second, is it you? Yes. SSI, SSDI, Social Security, where all benefits. Is it automatic? It is automatic. Otherwise, in the mail or by direct deposit, is it $5,000? It depends on how much your current benefits are, some more, some less. Same percentage, absolutely. This is the incredible great news, and that is why we have to stay on this channel and focus on whether the inflation has peaked or not peaked. Meantime, this Thursday, we're going to have the latest details on the unemployment numbers surging out of control, labor softening across the board. And then on Friday, we have the latest numbers on the job creations across the board as well. It's a big week, and it's just getting started, but a major news story that came in just minutes ago shows that the housing market continues to soften, but not particularly crash. Let me explain what's going on right tonight. Housing, most analysts now believe, will show the impairment of the interest rates from the Federal Reserve before any other part of this economy. Housing is directly impacted by raising mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are raised by... The Federal Reserve, impacted by the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. The Federal Reserve last week raising interest rates 75 basis point. So Wall Street analysts now collectively agreeing that the first impact of this recession will be felt in the housing market. And over the last month, we've not seen the housing market show anything of a robustness across the board, softening left and right. New home sales, which are, exist, which are brand new construction, down. Existing home sales, which are existing homes being resold, down. Price of homes still up year to date, but the price escalation has dropped dramatically. Mortgage applications, the lowest since nine in 20 years. But we saw last week when the mortgage rates dropped quickly across the board. And finally, the builder confidence, the lowest we've seen in a drop of a 33-year tracking record. So housing is where you're going to see the impact of this recession first. The last, they say, is, in, is unemployment. But tonight we have a really shocking report, and that shocking report released minutes ago, this was not on afternoons, is that there have now been posted 32,000 jobs lost in the tech sector this year alone, and the jobs are not being replaced. They have canceled, terminated, laid off, closed the doors on 32,000 people in the tech sector this year alone. On the other side, we have major hiring in travel and leisure and hospitality. The day started with Robinhood, the popular online trading app, announcing it's laying off more people. This is after they laid off people earlier this year. What do they announce? Massive layoffs, and that spurred big shockers across the board. What did they say? They basically said there's big problems on the cost side. They had to cost, cut the cost, and so had to lay off the employees, and that caused the stocks to go actually the other direction. Yes, the stock was up nearly 13% when they announced they're laying off 23% of their workforce. Makes sense? It doesn't. <laughs> it's coming up laying this according. Robinhood laid off 23% of its workforce today after it laid off 9% of its workforce in April. Folks, this is why you have to get a force to much check in every U.S. state. Tonight, you're going to stand on even more than ever before why you have to get a force to much check in every U.S. state because we're going back to a common subject feature on this channel before, the financial cliff. The financial cliff manifests itself more tonight than it has ever done on this channel, and I'll explain that later in this according, but for now, you need to get that force to much check in every U.S. state. What is it? It's about $100,000 you qualify. Single individual, $75,000 or less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less, go get it. 
And it's huge. It was done by executive action for Barroso Biden in the month of March. A series of executive actions established these checks. Viewers have gotten these checks ever since. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Become a member. Go under this video and go get these monies. You qualify. Single individual, 75000 or less, go get them. Married couple, 150000 or less, go get them. And if you're on benefits, SSI, SSDI, Social Security, Railroad benefits, go get them. Tonight, you'll meet one new viewer who got 14 checks. That's in addition to the other viewer last week who got 80 checks. 14 stimulus checks, 80 stimulus checks. That's what's happening on this channel. Become a member. Become a member in the big second half. We're going to go over these four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. But now we want to jump into another major breaking news story minutes ago. Tonight, I told you it was going to happen. It is a major deal on the gasoline front, but it's not particularly what you thought it was going to be. Gasoline is determined by supply and demand, and demand was reduced by those OPEC plus consortium countries in recent months, and then the prices went up. Then the demand remained there as Americans came out of lockdown and wanted to drive, and the gasoline was not there. That caused the gasoline prices to surge out of control. The White House released 1 million barrels of gasoline per day from the U.S. Strategic Reserves. They believed it brought down the price of gasoline. Tonight, we learned it did not. Tonight, we learned that OPEC Plus has increased production to back to pre, almost pre-pandemic levels. It's a big story, but the quote of the story is the one I want you to hear right tonight. The quote of the story tonight is that gasoline demand is dropping quickly. John Kildoff of Again Capital tonight says that gasoline demand is now, quote, depressed. People are not buying gasoline like they were before. I'll explain the details in a second. The other part of the story, which is fascinating, says that the Saudis, namely OPEC+, Plus, has increased gasoline to near full capacity to levels that we last saw in March of 2020. So OPEC+, Plus, this is really great news, is now at full capacity back to where it was at the start of the pandemic, 11 million barrels a day. The president had traveled to Saudi Arabia to ask them to increase the barrels of gasoline when they make this announcement today. They did, but it was an insult to the president. They only did 100,000 more barrels because of his trip to them. This is fascinating. Why is there less demand for gasoline? Why is there increase in production? All the analysis of this latest recording. I told you the second half of this recording tonight is a biggie. You don't want to miss the big second half. Meantime, the bond yields are up today as well. The 10-year Treasury note surged to 2.81%. And that is as the 2- and the 10-year notes remain inverted. When the 2-year and 10-year notes remain inverted, they're indication of a recession. Finally, tonight, we learn that the debt of the average American has surged to the highest level we've seen in nearly 20 years. Credit card balances are now at the highest level in 20 years. The collective amount of balances on credit card debts in the United States tonight, $46 billion. This is a 13% increase in just 90 days. Ouch. We'll have more about that tonight later in this recording, but first, let's jump back into the other major stories I want to go over with you tonight. The other major stories tonight is that this economy is not where it was before, and the financial cliff is coming, and that financial cliff is causing some people to get confused left and right. You're not going to get confused. What is a financial cliff? A financial cliff involves when Americans believe, or any person believes, that everything is great in front of them. And they're walking along, singing a song, and then suddenly, whoops, they fall off a financial cliff. They literally fall off a cliff. They did not realize that the status of where they were right now is not going to continue to be good. And with the stock market surging higher than ever in recent weeks, the White House saying there is no recession, the Federal Reserve saying there is not going to be any inflation, the Federal Reserve saying that labor's in great numbers. A lot of fake statements left and right. What does that mean for you? It means that if you're listening to it, you could get caught in the financial cliff. We're going to go over what that means for you in the second half with the latest details across the board. But I start first with this quote from Art Hogan. You remember Art Hogan. He is a brilliant analyst, and he always gets it right. Now, last night we said on this channel, we're focused on data. We're focused on data to know where your money is, where your economy is, recession, inflation, labor, 
and housing. And tonight he says, you need to focus on the data and less on the analysis. He says, I think that investors need to pay more attention to what the data is telling them right now than ever before and stop focusing on every individual Fed speaker in their parade of Fed speakers. <laughs> That's what he said. Our expectations of what they should and shouldn't be should not rule, rather the data. And we'll go over more about that data in the big second half. One of the benefits of becoming a member is the membership newsletter. Delivered Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alerts. And down in the membership newsletter at the third line is the Allied Worksheets. It's a PDF that's in my hand right now. It's about eight pages in length, and it's making the big difference. One viewer overnight got 14 checks. You heard me right. 14. One, four. 14 stimulus checks. This follows Spelly, who got a handful of checks last week, and follows that other viewer who got 80 checks the day before. I'm going to go over why their success is stemming back from becoming a member, getting the newsletter, and these worksheets. Tonight, let's pull out the worksheets and let's learn about what we've earned as well. On that first page, we have a lot about inflation. So, on the inflationary front, is there any indication that inflation has peaked, that's coming down? No. There's no indication that inflation has peaked. The latest data we had it was last Friday. The personal consumption expenditure number, the PCE, it's a once a month number. And it showed that it was at the highest level since the 1980s. The next time we have an inflationary data number delivered to us, and a biggie, the most important you could say, is approximately August 10th, when that CPI is released for the month of July. Expected to go higher. The day after, the PPI, the Producer Price Index, engages wholesale sales consumption numbers, how much the wholesale products are, expected to go higher. The day after that, the retail sales. Great news for you. Because as inflation goes higher, your benefits go higher. Once your benefits go up, they never go down the highest lift of your lifetime. The other update about inflation tonight is that we have those two Fed governors who basically says expect more rate increases because inflation has still not come down. A, they're right. Inflation has not come down. B, they're exactly what I said last night. Last night on this channel, I said during this show that only 30 analysts on 30% of analysts on Wall Street now believe that the next Federal Reserve hike will be 75 basis point, and they believe that's the final hike. They actually instead, the vast majority believe that there will be a 50 basis point hike in September, and that will be the final hike. Not what I've been saying. I've been saying, along with that 30% minority, that in September it will be a 75 basis point hike. Then we have a lot of hikes continue throughout the rest of the year. That's what daily, and now Boulard says, get ready for a lot of hikes for a long time to come. Recession, what do we know about recession? We're in a recession. We're in a recession because two negative quarters of GDP growth have been posted. What is a recession? It's an economic term. It's defined as two consecutive negative quarters, which is three months and then three months, of negative GDP. GDP is the gross national product. Negative means you're not growing. Mean, negative means you're contracting. And that number was released last Thursday. It's not in dispute. In fact, we know what's going to happen. When we had the Atlanta Fed GDP Now data released on July 1, it was a tracking tool, live tracking tool, that gauged what had just happened that ended in the month of June. They posted negative GDP growth. Then, what do you know on labor? Tonight, we know a lot more about labor. We'll have more about this in the big second half. Basically, 32,000 people have been laid off in the tech sector. Less than 9% of employees intact tonight believe that their job will still be there tomorrow. They all fear they're going to lose their jobs. Over on hospitality, travel, and leisure, like everything from Royal Caribbean to Hilton, they can't hire enough fast enough. They can't find the employees. And the Federal Reserve, what do we know about the Federal Reserve? Exactly what I said. They're off in the month of August. They're back in September. They're going to do more rate hikes. And the major quote I had last night, but I want to bring it back tonight as well, is that the analysts do not, have not, and may not still embed the risk into the market of a lot more interest rate spikes. They've not embedded the risk. And if they've not assessed the risk, oh boy, you know how bad that is. When they've not assessed the risk that there's a lot more interest rate spikes in the Federal Reserve from Jay Powell & Co., Oh, boy, that's like walking into a tuxedo party wearing lobster shorts. Mm. We'll have more about that later in the big second half. Now, let's go to that next page of the worksheet. This is the one that delivered magic again last night. And if you saw it, you experienced it with me. One person was in the live chat of LA Live last night and revealed she got 14 checks. 
14 checks for rent. If you're that viewer, send me a private message on Facebook. I want to give you a shout out by name tomorrow. It happened so quickly. We are all just celebrating for her when it happened. She follows Spelly, who got multiple checks, and she follows the other viewer who got 80 checks from this page of the worksheet. Let's go over the page of the worksheet. It's a table. All this stuff is proprietary to LLH. You're not going to see this anywhere else. This is why there's the number three most watched financial news channel in America, broadcast, print, or streaming. Here we go. On this table, you take track. You take, uh, you take notes of when you apply for check, what checks you got, and how much you got. She did that, the 80 person, the 80 person, the 80 check person, but she forgot to look at her piece of paper. And then she got that email. She got that email two Thursdays ago from Florida. Said, ma'am, you've been approved. Approved for what? Check B. Congratulations. It gets better. She got approved for her mortgage for check B. Wow. Gets even better than that. She got approved for 18 months of her mortgage. My goodness. That is not $10,000. That's tens of thousands of dollars. But it gets even better than that. When she applied for her mortgage, she also applied for all her utilities. Four utilities plus a mortgage. That's five checks. Five checks a month for 18 months? Yes, that's 80 to approximately 100 checks. That is what she got. The viewer last night got 14 checks. Spelly got lots of checks. It's a regular occurrence on this channel. And when you use these worksheets, when you use the newsletter, the magic happens to you too as well. Become a member. Go right in this video and become, join this channel right now. The next page, Fist Stimulus. What do we know tonight about Fist Stimulus? We know tonight that inflation has not peaked. We know tonight that two governors, Boulard, St. Louis, and Daly, San Francisco, both say that inflation has not peaked and inflation may still be going higher. We have a lot more work to do. So that's big news for your benefits because remember, we're watching three months of data. July released August 10th, Sep August released September 10th, and September released October 10th. And if they're correct, which it, they usually are when it comes to inflation, then your benefits are going up a lot. Then, student loan debt forgiveness. The president says he's going to, internally, among insiders, not publicly, says he's going to forgive $10,000 of student loan debts. For individuals who make $150,000 or less, the president already forgave student loan debts. For individuals who became disabled after graduation, people who went to work in the nonprofit or public sector after graduation, and for individuals who became defrauded by the university across the board. Finally, the last page about in the worksheets is gasoline. So tonight, this is a fascinating story, and we'll be watching it tomorrow across the board. Number one, OPEC Plus met today, as I told you all last week, they would. Number two, they did increase capacities as we thought they would, but we did not know that their capacity is now at the levels of 2020's month of March. That is incredible great news. But the big shocker is that the demand for gasoline is not particularly right there yet. Why is this? Well, the international price of Grand Crude is falling dramatically. In less than 24 hours, Brent Crude was 110. It tonight is 98. It could be 97 by the time of this broadcast. This is despite all those embargoes against Vladimir Putin. Yes, Brent Crude is falling dramatically. In the United States, the, the U.S. domestic unleaded AAA national average has been falling for several weeks. It fell another 20 cents. It's almost 40 cents under what it was when Putin invaded Ukraine. Well, that's great news for gasoline. Remember, gasoline determines how much your benefits go up because gasoline causes inflation along with supply chain disruption. We'll be watching that price of gasoline in the next few days. Remember, the demand of gasoline is falling, and the oil traders are also training it down based upon the belief that the demand will not be there if there's a recession. It's all in the membership newsletter. Become a member right now. Go under this video and join the channel. Join this channel with the hundreds that joined yesterday. Welcome to all the new members. Welcome to all the returning members. And also welcome to the members who upgraded from Purple Hawk to Purple Power overnight. Lots of major details still coming on in tonight across the board. A major number released this morning and still at issue tonight is the ISM, Non-Manufacturing Purchase Managers Index. That number was released today, and it showed a slight rebound from the month of July. The number came in at 56.7% print versus a 55.3. It's basically showing that in the non-manufacturing purchasing, the improvement was there. Slight improvement across the board. 
Meantime, while Robinhood laid off all those employees today, its stock was up 13%. Why is a stock up when they're laying off so many employees? And why are credit card debts the highest level of 20 years surging 3% in three months when the debt percentage is the highest we've seen in a long time? I'll explain all that in the big second half. Plus, we'll get a preview of what to see tomorrow as those unemployment numbers are released. And also, we'll have a preview of what's to come in on Friday as the latest numbers on non-farm payroll job creations are released as well. I told you it's a big night, but in the big second half, we're going to go over all those incredible checks. You deserve these big checks. Get them right tonight. It's approximately $100,000 done by executive action in the month of March, you're going to get those incredible checks. You're going to be another success story because positivity breeds success. Jump in the live chat, and if you've had a success story, post it right now. Become a member, and I'll see you big back in the second half as we go over all these incredible checks. As America's Most Watched Show in Primetime continues for financial news, it's Evening's Ally, and I'll see you back in 60 seconds. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, no. then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings at 8 at 9 a.m. Home LLA returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LLA at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Light. And the excitement continues right now in the big second half for August 3rd, 2022 from the shores of Santa Monica, California. Tomorrow we'll see more earnings calls and we'll see whether those earnings numbers give us guidance for the third quarter. The importance of that detailed in this big second half. Also coming up in the big second half, more about where this money is and where this economy is going. The breaking news on the economy, your recession, the inflation, the benefit rises, and also the housing market and your unemployment and stimulus. They are all coming up right now as we go into a big second half of Evenings LA starting right now. Did you become a member during the commercial break? Hope you did. And right now we're going to go over all those incredible four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. Back in the month of March, the President of the United States did a series of incredible actions. They were executive actions, and those incredible checks were part of those executive actions that delivered $100,000. I had the benefit, you had the benefit, of looking for them at that same time. What happened? Viewers in the month of March said, Ally, can you find some checks? And I looked and I found them, and they are incredible. Two focuses I had for you at the time. Number one, big checks. Number two, Big eligibility. We found both of them. First, approximately $100,000. Second, you qualify. Single individual, $75,000 less, go get them. Married couple, $150,000 less, go get them. If you rent, if you own, if you're on benefits, you're in auto benefits, go get them as well. How do you do this? Step one, you go into this video, join the channel. Step two, become a member. And with that, let's go over each of these incredible checks starting right now. The first check is a $6,500 to $12,000 check. And it's wonderful. I call it check A on this channel. That incredible check is huge. It's called the Weatherizing Grant check. And let's look at it right now. Single individual, $75,000 less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 less, go get it. And if you're on benefits, go get it as well. How do you get it? Step one, go under this video, become a member. Get that incredible newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alerts. I want to personally congratulate and welcome all the brand new members. 
over 100 new members overnight. Plus, I want to welcome back all the existing members. Many members, nearly 18 months as membership. Stay here because this is where the news happens. This is where the money happens. Number three, I also want to thank the people that upgraded from Purple Hawk to Purple Power overnight. A lot of you. Become a member. Go down that membership newsletter. You see Check A. There it is. Click the link and you go right in and apply. Incredible. This is the check that Speller got. And go get it approximately $12,000. We're not been there yet. Go get Check B. Check B is a wonderful fifteen dollars to $80,000 for stimulus check in every U.S. state. And this is the check that the viewer got for 80 plus checks. This is also the check that the viewer got, the other viewer got for 14 checks last night. It's fifteen dollars to $80,000 of incredible money. Single individual, $75,000 less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 less, go get it. And how do you get it? You become a member. Do down in then the membership newsletter, you find check B. There it is. Click the link and you go right in and apply. And you are ready to rock and roll, but you're not done there yet because look at that. $80,000, $12,000, that's $100,000 of checks between A and B. Let's now go get some more checks from check C. It's averaging about $45,000. Many viewers have gotten over $150,000. And it's for rent, utilities, mortgage, assistance, and more. Many viewers are getting $2,000 a month over 12 months. How do you get this? You know the routine. Step one, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. Then join the channel as a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino VIP. Get that incredible membership newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Go down the newsletter to find Check C. There it is. It tells you who to call, what to say, and when to say it. And go get those incredible Check C's. Check C's have been gotten by viewers of this channel for a very long time because it's the residue of third stimulus. And there's been big success stories on this channel. Viewers of this channel have gotten over $50 million since this channel launched in March of 2020. Let's look at some of the success stories, just some, for Check C's. From Nisi, Richard, Nancy, Mark, Elizabeth. Do you want $30,000 for rent? Go get Check C. As that one viewer last night, she got 14 months of checks for rent. How about these numbers for utilities? Incredible. For Angela, Mark, Nancy, do you want these utilities? Well, Mark's brother-in-law got $15,000. Go get check C's. And then snap, that same brother-in-law is getting a quarter million dollars over 10 years. What about combinations? Incredible. Look at this. From Nisi, Mark, Lorraine, Nancy, Johnny. Nisi went from $23,000 to $50,000. Mark went from this graphic to this graphic. Then $50,000. Then $100,000. Then he went to one sixty-six. And finally, the incredible Lorraine, she went from 105 to 155. You could do as well. Go on to this video, become a member, Purple Hawk, Purple Power, and Calcino VIP. A couple familiar subjects between those viewers, the following. One, number one, they're in all the live chats. You gotta be in all the live chats. Last night we delivered the Jolts number. What is the Jolts? Why is it significant? What does it mean for you? Not covering it tonight on this recording. The news is so robust right now. There is so much breaking news. I come on this channel with so much notes, so much data daily by the hour. You can't miss a recording because it's not repeated. Number two, they keep on getting checks. You get a check today, you keep on getting checks. Whether it's Spelly, whether it's Margaret, whether it's Johnny and Nancy, whether it's Nisi and Lorraine, keep on getting checks. That's what you do as well. Let's recap what you need to do. Number one, go into this video and subscribe. You're watching LA Late, the number three most watched financial news channel in America. On fire, expanding, trying to go after that number two position. Have you seen all the major changes? Number one, LA Late Live, the love of this channel, is now 24 hours a day, seven days a week with two tickers under the screen, a live feed that's updated throughout the day. Jump into LA Live at any time throughout the night, morning, or evening to know what's going on with your money. Number two, LALake.com, the new site that started all nearly 20 years ago, has been revamped to feature the latest breaking news stories about your money. And then coming to this channel in less than a few days is LA2, LA3, the brand new two channels joining this family. Number two, go into this video, join the channel. Become a member, Purple Hawk, Purple Power Cows, you know, VIP. Be a member and stay a member. Inspire other people. Post your success story so other people see it. Send me your success story on Facebook. Private message so I feature on air. And number three, go to the Fundus channel and hit that bell so you have all notifications set to all on. 
finally get that incredible newsletter, the talk of the town, the newsletter that's helping one viewer get 14 checks, another viewer get 80 checks. Now, how do you get that incredible newsletter? You go under this video, become a member. Let's look at that newsletter starting right now. That newsletter is delivered Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central. Know your time zone. It's delivered via the YouTube alerts to members. What is a YouTube alert? Let's look at a YouTube alert right here. For members only, New LA Post. That's the title. Delivered by email. From who? YouTube. But written by me. Look at the time. 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And here is the body of the email. The first line always looks the same. LA Members Newsletter Today. See the four emojis of, of mailboxes? So simple. That's the alert. Go down on this alert. Go down in this alert, past the guy at the surfboard, there he is, to where it says new members po view post. Click the button and you go right in and apply. And get those incredible checks across the board. You are ready to rock and roll and you're ready to find that financial independence. Become a member right tonight and get on track for where you deserve those big sums of money. It all starts here, the magic on LL8. Become a member, Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcium VIP. And tonight with that, we jump into the other major story. And folks, this is a confusing story. We're going to go over how it started, where it is, and where it's going. I'm glad you stayed the second half because this is a story you need to know. First, we understood for over several months, this is a financial cliff coming. What is a financial cliff? A financial cliff is when you're dealing with the status quo. You think the status quo is, you know, doable. Not great, but maybe it's doable. And then suddenly you trip. You fall, and you fall off a cliff because the status quo is gone. Something really bad suddenly happens. And no one told you that the status quo was going to end. You thought it was going to stay. First, let's go over what's being said to you elsewhere. Number one, the White House says we're not in a recession. We are in a recession. Recession is an economic term defined by economy, by economists. Two negative quarters of GDP growth. Number two. The Wall Street executives, the White House, and the Federal Reserve all say it's a strong labor market. It's not. It's 260,000 new jobless claims, the worst numbers of 2022. Number three, they, some people are saying that inflation has peaked. There's no data that in case that inflation has peaked. Number four, some people say that the housing market is robust. It's not bust. It is not collapse, but it is not robust. There's a difference between robust and bust. Here tonight, the housing market is softened dramatically. New homes starts down, existing homes starts down, sentiments down, and the number of houses on inventory up. But it's not bust. We understand that, that we don't see foreclosures. We don't see uh, bankruptcies. So we don't see that type of implosion. Finally, there are some people who want to tell you that everything is supposed to happen at the exact same time at the very start of recession, equally dispersed everywhere. That's also untrue. All right, so tonight I want to go into the part of this that's so important for you. And the part of it, which of course is the most complicated, that is the stock market. You may not own stocks. You may not have any interest in the stock market. But the stock market has every interest in you. Why? If tomorrow morning you woke up and heard the stock market was down 3,000 points, guess what would happen? Everyone would panic in your town. They would believe that something dramatically bad had happened. They won't know why the stock market is down, but they would panic. The stock market has always gauged consumer confidence, consumer spending, because everyone knows what the stock market is. And if it's down, they understand it's bad. And they, if it's up, they understand it's good. But tonight, if you look into the details of what's going on, even the players in the stock market are getting confused. Let me go over the quotes, and then let me go over the analysis with you. First, the data, because we're data dependent. The stock market collapsed in June after Walmart gave downward guidance for corporate earnings through the end of the year and missed Target much the same. It continued to fall dramatically in the month of June as a series of companies reported first quarter earnings and there were major misses. Most analysts did not expect those misses. They thought the companies had been able to survive despite the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. They were wrong. So the stock market collapsed dramatically in June. We and everyone declared a bear market. Everyone's in agreement so far as to those facts. It's what happened since then. 
in the last 15 days, the stock market's gone straight up, straight up, 17% straight up for the NASDAQ, 16% straight up for the S&P. If the market is going straight up, what's going on? Because straight up in the stock market looks like great times are here to stay. Or are they not? Let's go over the analysis starting right now. It's conflicting. On one side, we have this quote tonight. From Evercore ISI's Julian Emanuel, he says, we have not seen the bottom, the, the lowest level, of the stock market yet, and that the bear market is still going on. He says that people have become too complacent after the current rally we saw in the month of July, that started in late July, around the J July 15th, and they think that people have become too optimistic, a lot of froth, and a lot of not grounded rationality. The following yield story has been likely run its course, and that too is a headwind for stocks. And people are telling you they aren't concerned too much. That's not good. So he says the bear market, the downward spiral of this U.S. economy and the stock market is just getting underway, has not ended, and that the rally upward in July is short term and about to end. Then on the other side, this quote tonight as well, conflicting quote. This one is from Ned Davis Research, who says that the there is enough indication right now that the bear market that started in May was done in less than 30 days and ended on June 6, 17th, and that there's more indication because the S&P is up 12%. Wow. Then we have these quotes coming in tonight. These quotes are massive quotes, folks. Massive quotes from Paul Brinton minutes ago. He's founder and CEO of a 10 billion dollar derivative fire firm called Capstone Investment Advisors. If it's 10 billion, he knows what he's talking about. He says the following. What I think you see is that in every cycle, you see headlines hit. And that'll cause investors to question whether there's contagion within the system. Meantime, that if one company releases something which really spooks investors, means it's bad, whether it's the inability to raise finances or debt or it's the inability to have some issues, then investors like me, you're going to say, well, hold on a second. They're having problems. Does that mean that the other people in the sector are having problems as well? That's his quote. And should I readjust my position and make my portfolio make sure it's not a contagion? Let me pause right here to explain what he's talking about. Three weeks ago, Walmart gave guidance downward for their corporate earnings for second quarter that are coming out in just a few days from now. And that caused retail stocks that day to implode, go down dramatically. But last Friday, Amazon reported corporate earnings, major beat, top and bottom. So it was not contagious across all retail sectors. That's what he's referring to. Let's go on with the quote. So ultimately, I don't think you're going to see a huge uptake in the amount of defaults when the dust is settled. He says, basically, when all the froth is out of, the, out of this trading, you're not going to see a lot of bankruptcies, but... I don't think that it's simply an extraordinary move in interest rates. As I see how it's going to impact every person and corporation, I don't buy this notion that every U.S. corporation and every global, global balance sheet is in a perfect condition that they can sustain an interest rate spike that we've been experiencing right now. Wow, what a quote. He basically says, with interest rates the highest of a lifetime, because the Federal Reserve which you already heard earlier in this recording, is going to continue to raise, as I say they're going to continue to raise, as Wall Street is not thinking they're going to continue to raise, he says, I do not believe that most corporations' balance sheet can survive those massive interest rate spikes. I got to agree with him. I agree with him. And what he is basically saying is that the bear market has not ended. Here's my analysis tonight. My analysis tonight is that it's important to rely upon data. And when Art Hogan repeats exactly what I said last night, that data controls before an analysis, well, obviously, that makes sense. Data does not lie. Unemployment claims tomorrow 260. If it's 260, it's 260. It's not a good number. Analysis comes out. It's a great number, 260. It's wrong analysis. It's not a good number. It's a bad number. 260 is bad. Then, when you had the CPI print coming in August 10th, let's say it's 9.4% compared to the month of June, 9.1%. It's higher. Oh, but that's a great number. That's wrong analysis. The data doesn't lie. You can't spin the data with wrong analysis. Finally, the reason why I led in with the comments about recession, inflation, the economy, your money from the White House, the Federal Reserve, and some analysts 
is because if you're seeing it, I'm seeing it. What is it? There's a notion where people want to keep on analyzing the situation in a positive realm for their own personal endeavors. The White House doesn't want to say we're in a recession because it hurts the White House's popularity among U.S. voters, obviously. The Federal Reserve said, I don't want to discuss a recession. When its governor from Minneapolis appeared on Face of the Nation on Sunday when asked about recession, she says, I'm not answering the question. Obviously, they don't want to even talk about something that's negative about them. Number three, when the Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, appears on broadcast news on Monday and says there's a strong labor market, it's not true because she wants to paint it as a better economy than it is. And when investment managers appear on broadcast news and says, I'm buying stocks here, I'm buying stocks there, and you should as well, you got to look at them and say, oh, you want me to buy stocks from you. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. We're not in the bottom of the market. Here's the data tonight. A recession's underway. Number two, inflation has not peaked. Number three, labor is getting softer week by week. Number four, housing is getting weak day after day. With all that data, do you think it's a bettering economy from today to tomorrow? No, it's a softening economy, economy every day. And with a softening economy, there could be a financial cliff any second. There could be a financial cliff every second, which causes Britain in that fascinating quote to say the following. If everyone's sitting around thinking that every sector is beautiful, and then suddenly you get one number that comes in from a sector, let's say it's housing, let's say it's retail, let's say it's tech, and it's horrible, then you freak out because you're on the wrong side of the analysis because you have a stock in that sector and you bet wrong. You may not own a stock, but if you're sitting home betting on the economy is really strong, not in recession, not with inflation, not with problems of labor, not with problems of housing, and the problems manifest themselves, that's a financial cliff, and you're going to fall off of it. You're not going to do that on this channel. That is why we put data first across the board. Finally, tonight, I'll end with that major story we started with earlier in this broadcast, which was the following. 32,000 unemployment people out of tech tonight. 32,000 newly unemployed people in tech tonight that were not unemployed earlier this year. And then if you gump, jump over to the airlines, they can't find enough employees to hire at any moment. Moreover, a new report tonight says that less than 9% of tech workers, according to a June survey from Blind, feel that their job is there tomorrow. They are nearly 80% to 90% believe they're going to get fired. Excuse me, 91% of them believe they're going to get fired tomorrow in technology. That is Apple, Amazon, all those major corporations. Folks, that is not a strong economy. And that is why you have to become a member across the board. I want to thank all the wonderful new members. I want to thank the levels of positivity. I want to thank you for staying on point. This channel wins because of data, and data doesn't lie. The data tomorrow is the jobless claims. The data on Friday is the job creations numbers. The data on August 10th is the CPI. Between then, we'll have more data on inflation, more data on recession, more data on housing, and more data on your economy. Ultimately, we can disagree upon analysis, but if the data does not support the analysis, we're not going with that analysis. We're in a session. We need to prepare our family by raising as much stimulus in our bank account as possible, by getting as much money there at hand. Americans elsewhere in that new report that says that they have increased their credit card debt levels to the highest level of 30 years and 3% in just three months shows that Americans think that the status quo is here to stay. It's not, as the economy is going to soften. How it softens and when it softens and where it's going, we'll navigate it together because we're a family that cares, a community that loves one another, a community that struggles together, and a community that wins together. It's the Purple Power Community. It's LLA, America's number three most watched financial news channel, and the news continues throughout the night with more details about your recession, your inflation, benefit raises, the housing market, and of course, your stimulus. Stay informed, stay soaked, have a beautiful night, and stay with Alalite for more.